Happy Monday, everybody. God, <laughs> that, is happy that Monday. was terrible. I never heard. Oh my God. Happy Monday. <laughs> that was the point. Nobody wow. loves Monday. <laughs> Garfield got one thing right. Nobody loves Monday. I don't know Damn. about that. I, I, Mondays I'm actually, always have bad vibes. I'm always excited to see you people, but you know, maybe I'm just alone in that. You're such different. a liar. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> Mondays just always have bad vibes, but hopefully we can turn those bad vibes around here on the PHNX Suns podcast. I'm Lindsay. That's Saul. That's Gerald. Espo is still recovering, but will hopefully be back with us tomorrow. <laughs> Damn. Saul, get you got your shade <laughs> raise out early, huh? Just, Sheesh. Wait, I can't rock a bye baby this. Rocking the baby. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't know him and him and Max uh, share the same affliction because Max has been babying his shoulder ever since we played dodgeball <laughs> like a big whiny baby. Oh man, <laughs> lots of shade being thrown in the first two minutes of the show. I mean, seriously, yeah, he's not listening. He See, it's matter. Monday. I told you, Mondays are great. That's but why it's fun to be here. <laughs> here's one thing that we got today on the internet that was actually really cool to see, in my opinion. Uh, Clay Thompson had some things to say about the kerfuffle that he got into with Devin Booker earlier last season. Here's what he had to say. Bar you dropped on someone in the league. I know, Book, mm. you gave him the... Yeah, I was in my feelings, though. And time. Book was busting my ass that day. I was not where I needed to be. Yeah. <laughs> you you know, it. stuff doesn't age well. Now that it age well, for yeah. me. Like, I don't need to be flexing four rings, bro. Like, everybody know that. That's on Wikipedia, like... I just my game wasn't where it was at, and we all get insecure at times. Yeah. I'm not man enough to admit that. I'm man enough to admit that we all have our moments of weakness. So I'm not really proud of that one, because I see Devin Booker and I should be like, man, I should be proud of this young man. Yeah. Like the work he's put in, he survived a tough regime in Phoenix where everyone's getting traded. He's playing for a new coach every year, but yeah. now he's a franchise player because he just kept working. So I admire the guys who have work ethic like mm -hmm. that. You know. Mm -hmm. Duh, I love this. I do mm -hmm. too. I love that <laughs> that sense of realness uh, from Clay because I love Clay. I but then I saw that against Booker and I was like, oh, don't be that don't dude. Don't make me not be able yeah, to like you anymore. You know, like, yeah. don't be that dude. He redeemed himself. I, I appreciate the fact that he said I was just in my feelings. Like yeah. that's that takes a big man to do something like that or a big person to do that. I should say uh, to really acknowledge that. Man, I was being weak as shit in that moment. <laughs> For real. Yeah, he's he's always been a very honest and uh, upfront athlete in that way, and I think that's what a lot of people appreciate about him. Aside from you know the success and the shooting that he has, he's just an awesome dude in real life. Like all the videos of him on his boat when he was rehabbing and stuff, people love that shit. Um, so I I love the fact that he was able to just be upfront about it, and it kind of echoes what Book told us that night when we were asking him about the whole kerfuffle mm -hmm. and he seemed kind of surprised by it and like by the behavior and he had nothing but positive things to say about clay so uh it's it's pretty cool that he was able to just go out and admit that like yeah he was busting my ass i was mad about it it happens like, yeah yeah honestly i mean i just don't think that you see this that often a lot of times when especially in athletes because it's a competitive sport like you have to be a competitive person mm -hmm. to make it to this kind of level oftentimes we see people double down mm -hmm. and they're like, no, I'm just going to stick to it and pretend mm -hmm. that that's the right move. So it was really cool to see Clay come out and be like, no, that, that was stupid. Mm -hmm. And I was in my feels. <laughs> I, I felt some type of way about it. I let it get to me. But now looking back, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I think sometimes, you know, as a, as a professional athlete or even just somebody that's really good at what you do, um, like when somebody that you'd never really acknowledged before that you thought was like, you know, they're on a bad team. They're never going to compete when they rise up and they finally get their moment to, to overcome you at some point, you, there could be a little saltiness there. Like, no, not, that's not supposed to happen. Right. Like I'm not, that yet dude, anyway. not you, you know what I mean? And like, and it happens so fast. Um, I'm sure it caught him by surprise. It takes a big person to really bounce back from something like that. We had people last week in the chat that just wanted to bag on Bradley Beal. And then we found out that wasn't true either. <laughs> that's right. And you know, Maybe they're going to apologize at some point. I don't know. We'll mm, see. I wouldn't hold my breath like that. <laughs> but it would be nice mm -hmm. if it did. Um, also, low-key, how do you think Paul George felt about those comments? 
I don't care. <laughs> so well, I what feel do you mean? about it. Like I Well, a lot of people were saying that it probably made him a little salty because PG doesn't seem to like book that much. That was the speculation oh, is really? that this was kind of like I never really low key shade at yeah. book. From I didn't PG. know that. I didn't know that oh, they, yeah. they, they didn't they didn't they don't see eye to eye. Oh yeah, they had that moment. Uh it was the Pat Beverly game a few years ago during the regular season. Um, I think Book hit a couple of clutch shots down the stretch. Um, and there was that picture of Book running away or running by Pat Bev. And they're both running back on defense. And Pat Bev has like the sad look on his face or like the scowl on his face or whatever. Um, I think it was from that game. But he, Booker and Paul George, like kind of got into it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like these guys understand, and especially Paul George, if he's doing a podcast now where he's been very honest about a lot of things in the NBA, his relationships with players, his mental health, a lot of things like that. I feel like you kind of have to acknowledge that like a lot of these things that get said in the heat of the moment, or a lot of these beefs that you have in the NBA are in that prism of competition. And when it comes to, you know, we're in fucking August and we're just talking about things like it's okay to admit that like, we're all pretty much cool with each other, but when we're on the court, we'll go to battle with anybody, like anybody on our team in practice, anybody that's up against us on the court. I feel like Paul George is aware of that. So I, I don't, I don't feel like that, like Clay's comments would piss him off or anything like that. Yeah. That'd be weird if that pissed him off. I think, I think a lot of this drama is for us though, to be completely honest and like us being non NBA players, like just in general around the league, things that people would think would be relationship ruiners or, um, create issues between players probably aren't that deep. Like Jose said, why doesn't Clay tell that to Booker in person instead of saving face on someone's podcast? Like there's a very real possibility they did have that conversation. Yeah, you don't know. There's a real possibility they had that conversation like two days after the actual game, but they're mm. not going to tell you that because yeah. that looks even worse, right? But yeah. him admitting it publicly, no matter how far down the road it's been, is still a really cool thing to see. Because, yeah. I mean, Book obviously didn't take it any certain way. He knows that it was just in the heat of competition. Sometimes you say things you don't really mean. Yeah. For the, and you for feel the, bad about it For afterwards. the Clay one, for sure. For the Paul George one, he was the one that was in the wrong based on what he reportedly said to Paul George. But, um, yeah, I, I agree with your Right, but that's what point. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, both sides, yes. right? Like, you, the reason why you can understand that a player might say something is because you've probably been on the other side of that. And you said something you regret saying. So yeah. either way, this is really cool to see. I love Clay. So this, uh, like you said, Saul, this kind of made you kind of like put a wet blanket on yeah, I mean, liking Clay. And I, so this just removed that. Yeah. We're good now. Yeah, I was, We're I mean, I, again. I've always been a big Clay fan just because like, I don't know if there's a player in history in the history of the NBA whose hot was ever hotter. I mean, we've seen him do some insane things in the NBA. What was it, like 37 points in a quarter? Like, yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous stuff, right? And so I've always been a fan, plus, you know, hashtag light-skinned. Um, <laughs> so I've always been a fan. And so I, when that happened, I was like, oh, that's real petty. Like, dude, you really had to flash the four? Like, that just is like, come on. You know, Devin Booker's grinded. I, and that's the other part about this that I do appreciate is the fact that he was like, Hey, he acknowledged like what Booker has had to go, go through to just to get back to this point or to get to this point. And you, if you recognize that, that means you're paying attention to what other players are having to do in their organizations and how awful it could be for them. So I, 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 I appreciate that part. That's what took it over the edge is that he acknowledged the crap that he had to crawl through just to get to the point where he could finally talk shit to Clay and be like, uh, I got it. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the best two guard in the league. You yeah. can't do shit about it. <laughs> I also love that he was like, I didn't have to flash the four. Like that's on Wikipedia. Wikipedia <laughs> of all sources. We love a Wikipedia. That reference. made me laugh so hard. I was like, damn, that's hilarious. All right. We also um, got some news from Twitter as well that Eric Gordon is officially participating on Team Bahamas. So tenth year seniors on Twitter said, it's been a long time coming, and now it's official. Eric Gordon becomes the latest roster addition to Team Bahamas. USA Basketball granted Gordon's release, and FIBA approved his change of country representation due to Article 22 of its internal regulations. And Article 22 prohibits a player from changing national team allegiances once he has participated in a major FIBA competition. As you guys know, Gordon previously competed for the USA in the 2010 FIBA World Cup, 
but the article can be amended at FIBA's discretion. If the player is joining a developing nation team, a developing national team program, and the move is deemed, quote, in the best interest of basketball. So this is good for Team Bahamas, getting some more big names, hopefully getting more recognition and um, growing the program over there. And then they had like an exhibition game today. Eric Gordon did play for a little bit. DA did not. Yeah, they played uh, Kansas again for the second straight like scrimmage or exhibition game, whatever you want to call it. Um, he looked fine. He didn't, you know, he didn't play down the stretch, even though it was a close game because they're saving these guys for things that aren't meaningless exhibitions against college teams. Uh, but he looked fine. He hit a couple threes, had a couple assists. So um, more importantly for me, honestly, is just him and DA getting to be on the court together, um, in, you know, decent competition. Once these actual games start, I think that's going to be fun to watch, especially for, Suns fans gives us something to do during the, <laughs> the dry months that we're coming up on here. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm anxious to see. I want to see Da play. I want to mm-hmm. see how he's going to perform. Um, you know, he he don't he doesn't have the the drama playing for the Bahamas as he does here. Uh, and in and I think that's it's either going to free him up or he's going to be more of the same. I don't know. We're going to have to find out though. And I'm very interested to see how that works out because playing for your for your national team is significant. We've heard Jock talk about it so many times about yeah like he i i'm not putting words into jock's mouth by any stretch of the imagination but i think he invests more stock in playing for his national team than he does playing for in the nba because i think he values it that much he takes that much pride in representing his country and i think that's commendable and and so i'm really anxious to see a developing program like the bahamas um have somebody like da who could be you know the face of the of, of their of their national team for the next maybe two or three rounds if he plays this right. I think it's just going to be interesting to see those two and their chemistry kind of grow a little bit more here, like you were talking, Gerald. Because if you want to talk about continuity, which was like the buzzword of the last shoot, however many years, <laughs> yeah. it feels like we've had that word just floating around forever at this point. Uh, this team does not have that. No, really, at all. No. Not at all. Um, at all. <laughs> so you got to get to work on that as quickly as you possibly can. So if you've got a couple guys on a national team together, the that's even better. Just as for as as far as like getting that chemistry going, finding new relationships with your teammates, and building that up. So I'm excited for that. And then of course, like you guys said, there's not a lot of NBA style basketball going on right now. So if we get to watch a couple NBA players in some of these games, mm-hmm. that's always a positive thing. Yep, we got Chimetsi Metu playing for Team Nigeria. We got Yuta Watanabe playing for Japan in the mm-hmm. FIBA World Cup. So we've got we've got multiple sons that are going to be playing games that we can watch if you're curious about some of the new guys or just even about some guys you've seen before like Gordon and DA. So that'll be fun. Um, Eli said, I want to see an all-city network tournament. No, you don't, Eli. No, you don't. Why? No, you do, but you, they Why? don't want to see it. The NVR and CHGO aren't ready for these buckets. We're about Ooh. to give them. I feel like it would Not be even close. so bad. It's true. They aren't ready. They aren't ready. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we wouldn't last. Not we, as in PHNX. <laughs> we as a whole. It would have to be a much shorter game. Listen, if we did this this king and duck scenario, where it was like two on two, mm. I, there's no that, stopping. That, yeah. There's no stopping but Gerald. We, we're doing I, like no. five on five. Oh, five on five. I don't That's know that any fun. network yeah. has enough. To be able to really pull that off. I think we have enough. Yeah, we'd have enough. It wouldn't be pretty. It wouldn't be as good as like the two on two or even the three on three, but we could we could fill out five. I would talk a lot of trash on behalf of you guys, and then I'd be real pissed if you let me down. (laughs) I'll throw a chair on the sidelines. There you go. Fire us up. You definitely don't have to worry about not getting some energy from the sidelines. I walk over on my Kinsey. You can can chill. It's 19 to 1. We're We're good. I'm like, absolutely not. You missed that shot, (laughs) Saul. Be better. (laughs) But honestly, all my money would definitely be on PHNX. That's a given. We've tried to do multiple competitions, but it just has not worked out because Mm -hmm. we quit halfway through for whatever reason. Well, they changed Um, it to a shooting competition. We were supposed to get some run in Vegas the first year that we went, and that changed into a three-point contest. Mm. Yeah, listen, I don't want to have any contests around, like, bags. Like, cornhole, like, it's fun, Mm. but, like, that's not my game, okay? Yeah. Clearly. Mm. Yes, Saul? Are you ready to pull out your shady race? No. You seem like you're just itching. No, I'm ready to go. Like okay. I'm, I'm, I, I'm proud of my cornhole game. 
I lasted further than anybody else in this company. Yeah, yeah you didn't have to play the eventual champs in the first round. You literally <laughs> set Gerald and I up for failure by teaming us up in the first round against a literal state champion yeah. bag player. Dead ringers. I, in I the don't first know what round. to tell you guys. Uh, uh, okay. I did know such things. Uh, you did too. I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. I did not know who those people were. Don't well, even lie. So we found okay. out pretty quick. You ain't got to lie to kick it. We, <laughs> it was we, really quick. So did everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, Lindsey Gerald over on court one or on board one. Yo. I turned around and got everybody situated on two, three, and four. <laughs> I turned around and Lindsey and Gerald are walking off. I was like, what happened? They're like, the game's already over. Yeah. Well, we lost. We scored three points. I got three points Gerald on the state champ. scored three points. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm going to take be clear. that with me. Ouch. Listen, they literally did not miss. Like, like the guy partner, he missed I feel like intentionally a couple times because he felt don't, bad. Don't for don't us. do that. You know what's so funny? You know <laughs> I think so, he felt bad. For you know what's us. so funny? You know what his name is? Hmm. It's Saul. Is it really? It is. <laughs> no, it's Saul. Whatever. That's right. Same thing. But yeah, same thing. <laughs> Spelled the same. So either That's way, right. you were gonna take an L from Saul. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> I hate you. But that was out at the Bet MGM Sportsbook at State Farm Stadium. It was a blast last Friday. If you guys came out, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. And of course, listen, if you have not signed up for Bet MGM yet, make sure you do and make sure you use that bonus code PHNX. There's a few different offers depending on where you live, but for our Arizona audience, you can place your first bet offer and receive up to 1,000 back in bonus bets if it loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-522-4700, Nevada. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Kansas, Nevada, New York, or Ontario. So, uh, Bet MGM Sportsbook, by the way, great place to watch the fights if you did not realize it. Uh, I just realized it for the first time this past weekend. I watched uh, the Jake Paul fight. Uh, it was pretty mid, but it was entertaining. Of course um, it was. But it made it even better that I was uh, that I had taken an OGs uh, to watch the fight. So okay. it was uh, nice and relaxing, and it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Like OGs is a fun brand, and you can always partake in some OGs by going to ogsbrands.com to find your nearest or closest dispensary to you. Um, they have all types of edibles. They have the fruits. They got the creams. Uh, they got the blended bags. Like, it's the whole nine yards. And plus, my favorite, obviously, the Happy Balance, which is a one-to-one THC to CBD ratio. Uh, it's strawberries and cream, and it's fantastic. And so check them out, ogsbrands.com, for your nearest dispensary and also remember that you must be 21 years of age to enjoy yes absolutely okay two things from the chat the first dagoon said there's a state champ for cornhole wtf that's what i said that's what i said but they were dead ringers Dude, like these, it was ridiculous they, they do they not were. screw around no. no they bring their own bags but honestly even did. beyond <clears throat> excuse me even beyond those two we had some really good like cornhole players during this tournament i'm not even gonna lie tell them sean Straight. Well, I was talking about more about man. If you guys had gotten our first round matchup, you would have been in the exact same spot, sitting on the couch two minutes later. Hey, listen, mm. it was okay spot. because I got to play DJ afterwards, and I was totally happy. We had with a good that. time with that. Yeah. Listen, if you want me to drop the playlist, <laughs> it goes from Britney Spears to everything you Blink can imagine. 182 mm. to Peso Pluma and everything in between. Like it was just, it was the <laughs> most random mix of things, and I only played each song for about a minute and a half before I was like, we're moving to the next one. Yeah, uh, I am available for hire for all of your DJ needs. Just throwing that out there. Also <laughs> in the chat, <laughs> we saw Don't Lindsay dance for the first me. time, and I, did. I was having a great time. I, she was vibing. I was she like, was. "Who yeah. is this person?" This I taught is awesome. Sean. I played some goth music. Taught Sean how to shoot the bats. It was mm -hmm. a blast. <laughs> we were having bats. so much fun. <laughs> That's all hilarious. right. Uh, another thing from the chat. Triple B said, "Lindsay, tell him you want a polar pop drinking contest." <laughs> <laughs> that's the style of competition that I think I should uh, partake in. At the very least, I mean, listen, the Polar Pop might give me a brain freeze, but if we're talking about making the best drink from Circle K in their Polar Pop selections, because mm. they got all the options and they've got syrups that you can add into your drinks as well, I would probably crush that one. Just yeah. throwing that out there. I think so. Um, one of my go-to favorites, obviously I've told you about the slushies. It's the Coke and the cherry mix, of course. Mm -hmm. But if I'm feeling a little like, I don't know, happy, if I don't want caffeine, it goes to uh, like a cherry limeade. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's just Sprite. And then you do 
two limes, one cherry two of limes. the syrups. Okay. That's that's my go-to. But Circle <laughs> K is the best, obviously, of course, for the Polar Pops, but they also have a great coffee, beer, and snack selection and premium gas. So make sure you're not missing out on all the great stuff that Circle K has to offer. And right now, if you text PHNX to 31310 to join their SMS subscriber club, you're going to get a buy one, get one free offer on 32-ounce Polar Pops. So check them out. We got a couple of Arizona fighters, by the way. If you want to go to the bid MGM Sportsbook, uh, 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 Jose in the chat had mentioned a fighter. Uh, go back one more. There it is. Oscar Valdez uh, from Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley is fighting uh, next weekend, not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend after that. I think it's a, a championship bout, too. So a couple of, a couple of easy guys representing around. And the Benavides mm -hmm. brothers, well, yeah. mostly just one at this point. If you still. all didn't know, Lindsay very very uh big fan of boxing uh, so i like combat sports yeah she does <laughs> i'm okay with it she will she will fight somebody uh, hence why even... i play video games yeah. like it, just, it is it is what it is okay back to sun's basketball <laughs> We did get a ranking article from ESPN, mm -hmm. and uh, it had the Suns ranked fourth in this article. And I just want to kind of get you guys' thoughts about, first and foremost, being ranked fourth. How are you guys feeling about that? Because I know some people felt a little, some type of way about being four. But I feel like it's a solid positioning for the Suns. I think that's fair. Like, you look at the teams that are in front of them. It's the Denver Nuggets, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Boston Celtics. Those three in the Suns are the four that I kind of looked at as like the big contenders heading into next season. Maybe you put the Heat back in that category if they pull off the Damian Lillard trade. But like other than that, I don't think there's anything wrong with being four. They gave respect to the defending champs. They gave respect to the team that finished with the best record in the league last year. And they gave respect to the Celtics who traded for Kristaps Porzingis. Personally, I'm not as big on that move. I feel like they lost a little bit with Marcus Smart and Grant Williams leaving. Um, but I think four is perfectly fair, especially because the Suns will have questions to answer in terms of, A, their bench rotations because they have so many new guys to figure out who goes where, um, and also the the playmaking situation. Like, we know that Book and Beal and KD can split those duties. We know that big three is going to be really potent offensively, um, but we need to see how they handle that playmaking load consistently moving forward. We need to see who the fifth starter is still. So there are a lot of questions. I think the Suns will answer them. But heading into the season, that four is pretty good. Yeah, I agree with that. There's nothing else. I Until they get to the season and start to do things, you're just never going to know. Mm -hmm. And I think on the surface, you would put them behind the Bucks, you would put them behind the Celtics, and you'd put them behind the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. and it just makes sense. So, like, hey, I'm not I'm all up and out of shape <clears> about this. I feel like this is going to change once the season starts and these guys get into a flow. And I truly believe the Suns will be the best team in the league. I, I just really do. But until they prove it on the court and can show that they can build this chemistry together – it's they're they're four and everybody else is is proven it to some degree outside of the Celtics not really getting to the they they choked this year let's just say what it is. Am I the only one who's not entirely sold on the Kristaps Porzingis acquisition? Oh, I'm, not. I'm not. No, like I, I'm not saying I'm like it's not going to work. I just need to see it. I think more so than I need to see the Suns' new pieces. I think it gives them a potentially higher ceiling if it works out well, but I do think defensively they've got questions to answer. Like they just traded the heart and soul of their team with Marcus Smart, a guy who was one of their best defenders, a defensive player of the year, and they traded Grant Williams, who's another utility um, kind of Swiss Army knife kind of guy, can knock down threes, can defend well, um, and was just sort of an irritant. So I, I feel like losing both of those guys and just having Porzingis to show for it, I'm, I'm not 100% sold on that. I think they have the talent and the depth to overcome it, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm with you. I'm not a hundred percent convinced that they're like going to be that team in the East. I do also feel like uh, they are frauds to be, to be honest. Like, I don't understand how you could lose Marcus smart, who was kind of like a, he was kind of an all everything guy. You know, he's, he was the heart and soul for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and he was gritty, grimy. And with that team, sometimes they get in trouble because they play a little too much finesse ball. And um, and Marcus Smart can break that up a little bit. Now you just added another finesse dude to the mix because Kristaps is not a banger. Kristaps is not an aggressive dude that's going to take your heart. Kristaps is uh, – he's pretty soft. He's pretty soft. And so with Tatum and, and Brown, I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how this goes. I just eh. – 
and also like people I think are glossing over the fact that like Malcolm Brogdon is coming off a torn tendon in his tendon tendon in his arm. Jesus. It's a tendon, tendon, Words are hard, tendon, I know. Tendon. Um, but <laughs> like you, it was to the point where like teams they were trying to trade him this summer and teams wouldn't trade for him because of the severity of that injury. So maybe he's okay, ready to go into next season, but. That's another thing for them to overcome. And their backcourt depth was already a problem. That's why they traded for Brogdon in the first place because they needed more playmaking like we saw in that finals loss they had to the Warriors. So I, I'll need to see some things from them for sure to be convinced that they're like legit contenders instead of just a really good team in the East. Also, I know that you put Denver Nuggets at one out of respect. I understand that. They mm -hmm. deserve credit where credit is due for winning the championship this year. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a really, really tough path if the Denver Nuggets think they're going to repeat next year. I think it's going to be real hard. Uh, you're saying the quiet part out loud. I'm, and I'm just going to wait for the regular season. I still <laughs> respect the Denver Nuggets for I what they too. accomplished this year, and they do deserve to be towards the top of everyone's list because of that. I just think it's going to be really hard. That's uh, going to be real, real hard. I will say that I think if you look at their path through the West, it was obviously – easy in terms of easier than expected in terms of the seeds that they, they were playing ran right or through everybody they ran right through mm -hmm. them they have the best player in the world right now in Jokic and I will say that like Michael Porter Jr. did not have a great postseason run which is concerning if you're a team that like okay they won a title and MPJ was not playing like out of his mind he was better defensively than what we saw like two years ago when the Suns swept them um, but I do think that's concerning I think I like their rookie, um, Julian Strother. I think he's going to be good for them. So I, I do think they'll have guys that can step up. I don't think they have anybody that will completely fill the loss of Bruce Brown. But I, I still think they're the favorites in the West as of right now. And, and not even just as a respect thing, just in terms of like, I think they are the best team in the West right now. I need to see things from the Suns first for me to believe that they're better than the Nuggets. I think you have... Um... In the Nuggets, you have Jokic, who's always going to be Jokic. You, mm -hmm. you don't doubt that. Aaron Gordon, to me, took that step, that next step um, over the course of the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. Played as physical as you could ever ask anybody to play in the, in the current NBA. Like, he was a, a dominant guy. It, when he put his head down, it was very hard to stop him. Mm -hmm. And he abused the Suns last year. Um, and he abused several teams last year. He was such a difference maker that he, he made up for some of the things that MPJ was not able to provide offensively. Right. Um, can he do that again? I don't know. Jamal Murray was more consistent than I could ever recall. If you follow DMVR Nuggets in the season, they have a meter that was just like fire Jamal was or, like Jamal's back or, or terrible or Jamal. Like yeah, yeah, like they had a <laughs> right. meter. And uh, I mean, it, it fluctuated all season long until mm -hmm. we got to the playoffs and then it basically petered out the entire time. Like, so can he repeat that performance next year? Um, and then as you as you pointed out, MPJ. So you could look at a scenario where their their four are better suited than any other four. But I just have a hard time believing they're going to be able to repeat that performance. Um, and the Suns are just they're just built a little differently now, and I think they're ready to absorb whatever the Nuggets can throw their way. But again, I'm going to wait till the regular season to really prove that out. I just have a hunch that th this Suns team is going to be is going to be such a fun team to watch, and they're going to throw things at you that you you might not have ever seen before because of the flexibility and the versatility that they have one through four. And as far as the respect goes to, it's not just because of the fact that they won the championship last year. They also have one of, if not the best NBA player in the league right now yeah, in Nikola Jokic. And he, if you have that guy on your team, you're obviously in the conversation, no matter what, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And, and the, the other thing, too, the reason why you probably give the Nuggets the nod is because not only is Jokic a tremendous um player but he's such a tremendous player that can that can involve everybody on mm -hmm. the team and make other guys there. better and that's what elevates him if we were talking about like a Steph Curry for instance um, maybe it's a little bit different because Steph Curry is a primarily a, a scorer uh, rather than a, a major facilitator like Jokic and so like maybe you you have varying degrees of effectiveness but I think with Jokic any team he plays on, and he proved that a year ago before the finals when he dragged that bum-ass team to the playoffs as a sixth seed. Like, they had no business being a sixth seed. They were awful, but he still found a way because he's Jokic. So. 
Is there anybody on this ESPN list that's ranked too low, in your opinion? Yes. Who Who's too low? For, for me, yourself? it's it's the Oklahoma City Thunder. I am high as hell on the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're 15th on this They're list. They're 15th on this list. Uh, mm-hmm. They're better than Dallas. Get the fuck out of here, Dallas. You ain't, you ain't shit. Um, uh, I think they're better than the Knicks. <laughs> I think the Kings. Oh man, I might, I might catch some strays here. You, oh, come on, Saul. Uh-oh. Come on, Saul. Ah, I gotta see them prove it in year two. I just feel like they might be a one-hit wonder. I don't know. Um, and then you, then you kind of, and, and I hate. I don't know why I have this aversion to the Cavaliers. <laughs> I just really hate Cleveland. Like why? I don't yeah, know why. why. I can't even explain it. I just, I'm not a big Donovan Mitchell fan. Okay. I think he's kind of a. He's kind of a fraudulent two guard. Like I'm just okay. not a big fan. So, so it's not the it's not the Cavs in and of themselves. No, I hate everything about Cleveland. I hate their uniforms. Oh, I hate their okay. colors. It is the Cavs in oh, yeah. Themselves. Oh yeah. Like I hate the city. I hate the river that they live by. Like I hate everything <laughs> about <river>. Cleveland. <laughs> everything sucks and I hate it. Cleveland yeah. sucks. It does. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Cleveland sucks. Unbelievable. So OKC, okay, I think. I didn't is, know that we were going to be throwing shade at Cleveland I, today. I, 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 I like <laughs> OKC. I, th- I like their mix. I think Shea Gilgis Alexander's uh, back in the fold. Um, you have Chet Holmgren coming back after never even playing a year ago. Like I think they have a lot of cool pieces. Um, that if they put it all together, they could take that next step. Uh, I think Ch- Chet Holmgren's going to be a, a good player. Um, I think in year one. Uh, he has the opportunity to really like be a, a, a versatile piece for that franchise. I, I like what OKC is doing, so um, I think they're going to be a top ten team, in my opinion. Top ten, okay. okay. I, I like. mean, listen, I like OKC. I think they're easy to root for. Um, they're an exciting team to get behind, so I don't blame you for having an affinity for them. Yeah, it's whatever the affinity the affinity is for OKC. It's the opposite for Cleveland. Damn. Clearly, <laughs> swap those two. We're okay. clearly it's tough. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like the Thunder. I'm okay with where they're at in these rankings. I feel like they're the young team that has to kind of prove themselves a little bit, even though they were in contention for a playoff spot. Like, obviously, that didn't happen. I think Chet will help. I think the EuroLeague MVP that they added will help. Um, I feel like the Pelicans are too low at number 17. Like, I know that their season kind of crashed and burned because Zion once again couldn't stay healthy. But they were also the number one team in the West for like almost the first half of the season. Like I feel like they're a team that's going to be slept on because of all the questions about Zion and whether Brandon Ingram can be healthy. Um, So I think that's a little bit low for me. I feel like the Raptors are really low at 25. Mm -hmm. I know they lost Fred Van Vliet, so that's going to that's going to affect things. But 25 feels really low for a team that was 500 last year. I don't think this is ranked too low, but when I saw it, I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. But the Detroit Pistons coming in dead last. <laughs> Monty's got an uphill battle in front of him there. Yeah, he does. It feels does. like it's steeper than what he inherited here with the Suns. Oh, oh it is. Definitely. Also, Portland, if they do keep Dame, should not be at 28. Like, I'm a big Scoot Henderson fan. I yeah. think Scoot is going to be rookie of the year. I think he's going to win it over at Wimbayama. There you go. I really feel like that because Scoot is a dog. Okay. And in this league, you need a dog to be that alpha out there. And if Dame is going to, you know, if he's gone, I still feel like 28 is too low because that's how much I believe in Scoot. Damn. I know. That's impressive. Um, Yeah, I think Portland is kind of an iffy one because you're not really sure what their roster is going to look like. I feel like Portland is where we were last year in the offseason. This weird limbo where it's like, will they, won't they? Is he going to put his foot down? Is he going to force things or whatever? Um, so, I don't know. Maybe we'll see a trade deadline move for Portland this upcoming year. Who yeah, knows? That's a weird situation. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very curious if he's going to like sit out if he doesn't get his trade before the season starts. Who, Damien? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think he will. It doesn't, think he he will. doesn't seem like he'd be that. I don't know. That's so extreme. He's been he's been, uh, he's been doing a lot of subtweeting lately. I get that, but he also <laughs> has put up with so much that to go from one end of the spectrum of like being so loyal to fully sitting out seems just so extreme. I don't know. I would it understand is. it, but it just seems like it wouldn't make sense. Right in the chat says, "What rank are the Lakers, and why is that too high?" <laughs> <laughs> they are number yes, seven. And yes. Seven. Yes. <laughs> I I feel like that's kind of right for them though. Like, I kind of like their offseason a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Like, they got Gabe Vincent. They got Torian Prince, Jackson Hayes, Cam Reddish. They kept 
Austin Reeves and Rui. And they were a conference finals team as much as they shouldn't have been. It was more of a matchup based thing. I don't know. I think they're I think they're a top ten team, honestly. Do you think so Philadelphia is six? Do you mm-hmm. think James Harden is just do you think we're good there that he's gonna be a seventy six there? It feels like it at this point. I haven't really heard yeah. much on that front for a while. And it feels like usually when these things happen, either they're gonna happen right before we hit training camp, because the Damian Lillard thing has also kind of died down a little bit. Like we haven't really heard much uh much uh scuttle or whatever the fuck you want to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um behind the scenes. So I don't know. I feel like everybody's kind of set right now. And maybe they're just waiting for training camp to to kind of switch things up. But it just feels like everybody's like, nah, we're good. I think this is this is who we got. This is where we're gonna roll with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I think they'll be good too because I think one of the biggest things that was holding them back was some of the rotations and adjustments on Doc Rivers' part. I think he coached a decent season last year, but I do think going from him to Nick Nurse is an upgrade for them. And I think that could be something that helps Joel Embiid and take Tyrese Maxey's game to the next level. Um, and if so, if they do get stuff worked out with James Harden and he's back and he's happy being there, maybe. I do feel like James Harden is about to realize um, that he is not going to be as valuable moving forward as he is right now. That I to me, I I, don't, I think that's part of the problem. They he might have wanted to go somewhere, and they were like, for what we have to give up to get you, I don't think it's worth it right now. Because he's was he thirty three, thirty four now? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and he's he's been one of the best scorers in in NBA history, no doubt. But you know, hey, at some point you start to lose a little bit. I'm not saying he's going why he can still easily put up 25 points a game. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's just do you really want to invest three or four more years to get to that 37, 38 year years of age for a guy that has for a large portion of his career not really taking care of himself the way people think he should have? You know what I mean? Like it's just one of those things. So I don't know. I, I feel like Philadelphia is always gonna be right there in the middle of that upper echelon of group of teams, but I don't know if they're ever going to, they're going to get over that hump um, the way they're constructed right now. You need a lot. You need a lot from Tyrese Maxey. You need a lot from other guys like uh, the shooter. God dang it. I keep, I always forget the guy Um, Tobias Harris. Mm -hmm. Um, You need those guys to elevate their game. And much like we saw with Aaron Gordon and Bruce Brown, like that's the type of elevation you need to get your team up to a championship level. And Philadelphia, for whatever reason, has never been able to find that guy to be able to step up to help out a Joel Embiid to that level. And so here they are, again, trying to do this one more time and hoping that it works out. But I, I just don't know. Um, I think Philly just needs to be nicer. <laughs> and you that'll, think that'll Philly be just it. needs to be nicer? You need to up your karma points. You need to up your karma well, points, be nicer. I, Maybe that'll... Uh... I feel like last year Embiid got caught caring more about the MVP race than about things that he should have probably been focused on. Because, like, look, he was a deserving MVP, but if you look at his numbers in the playoffs, they were not MVP-like. No. Like, James Harden won them more games in the playoffs than yeah. Joel Embiid did, and that's a problem if that's your best player and one of the three best players in the league. So... You're hoping that a coaching switch kind of unlocks that part of the equation Um, because I do think they have enough to be one of, if not the best teams in the East. They were pretty close last year, and I think they got a coaching upgrade, but they, they got to figure the Harden situation out. I, I, I like him in that role for, as the like number two guy instead of the number one guy, um, the kind of point guard role that he's taken on in recent years. But, yeah, they got a lot of questions to answer for sure. Nate in the chat said Philly is the mean girl of the NBA. <laughs> they kind of are. <laughs> and Eli said, I'd love to see Lindsay in the boardroom. Okay, everyone hug it out. Bro, I literally make them do it here on the show. Right? Like, that's my go-to. I'm just like, if you guys start fighting, I'm going to make you hug. <laughs> you got you got to move on somehow. Have we ever Listen. done that? Have I ever hugged anybody on the show? I've you tried to Espo. make you hug Espo. You Have did I? hug Espo. You I think Espo. At that was like the first year that we were yeah. doing this. Like, first couple months. Yeah. Yeah. I, Gerald and Espo I hugged because yeah. they got into it. Those two yeah. did, yeah. They did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Chris Paul, of all things, who'd have thought? Chris Paul, always trying to divide up people. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you stop it. 
I'm kidding, kidding Chris. <laughs> you know what doesn't divide people, but in fact brings them together? Ah, Four Peaks. Four Peaks beer. Sharing a Four Peaks beer over a delightful meal is a great way to bring people together. And it's best served with Suns basketball on in the background as well. Make sure you guys check out our friends over at Four Peaks on social, at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You do have to be 21 years or older to drink Four Peaks, and we ask that you drink responsibly. Um, But if you have not checked out Four Peaks in a hot minute, you can find it at your local grocery store. You can find it at Circle K. Or, of course, like I said, the brewery is a great place to hang out. Um, They've got a patio. I know it's still a little hot outside, but it's going to start cooling down. Hopefully, knock on wood, in the next few months, month and a half. I'm trying to will this into existence. (laughs) And then it will be patio season, and Four Peaks has an elite patio, so check them out. Uh, Speaking of elite, you can use these elite shady rays on your face if you get them because they're awesome. They're some of the best shades around, uh, and they're not crazy expensive, and that's the thing that probably means the most to everybody here. Uh, In fact, if you do this right, you can get two pairs of shady rays um, and save 50% off of your order if you order two or more. So there you go. By using promo code PHNX, it's that simple. Um, They're they're phenomenal. So you can wear the shades that over 250 thousand yeah 250,000 people 250,000 people. 250, people wear on a day-to-day basis and as i said exclusively for our listeners shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season go to shadyrays.com and use promo code phnx for 50 percent off of any pairs of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades that are rated five stars from all those people um we also have a really cool thing that is happening in about 45 minutes Yes. On the PHNX Cardinals yes. show. Big time. If you guys are a fan of the Cardinals, you don't want to miss this. Their show goes live at 4.30. So don't worry. You can hang out with us here this whole time until their show starts. Um, but there's a big announcement that is happening over there. And I will say uh, being a diehard is a benefit. When it comes to that big announcement as well, being a diehard actually has a lot of benefits. When you first sign up, you can get your choice of a free T-shirt or hat. You get discount on events and merch. You get early access to things. So if you have not become a diehard, now is a great time to do so. You can head to gophnx.com for all the details. But we also have a lot of um, events coming up, too. I have one thing that I will say, and uh, we will be doing some tailgates out at BetMGM. Mm-hmm. And I won't confirm this, but I won't deny it, that uh, the tailgate will be free oh, for nice. diehards. For okay. diehards. There we Food, go. Food, beer, right before a Cardinals game. You don't have to pay for shit. Mm-hmm. Just saying. There you go. Just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying you should uh, go to gophnx.com and sign up to become a diehard. It's, it's worth the money. I don't know how much more shit we can give you guys. <laughs> free food, free beer, free shirts. I mean, well, come on. All right, gentlemen. Let's continue our conversation around all the Phoenix Suns newcomers and re-signees. Today, we are going to be discussing Utah Watanabe and what we can expect from him on this Phoenix Suns squad. So he's got some strengths and weaknesses. And, of course, a um, couple <laughs> things about you. You what? It's, it's my go-to now. He's got now. some strengths and weaknesses, Listen, people. I, it, be, it was a thing. It became a thing the first time we did this, and I'm just sticking true he's got to some it because and he's got on the some graphic, weaknesses. it quite literally says strengths and weaknesses. So it's a thing. It's a thing. Okay. Anyway, he's a forward. He's 28. He's 6'8. His wingspan is 6'10. He's a shooter. And all the people shooter knock down three point shooter. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All I know is that all of the Brooklyn Nets fans, anytime I watch any video about him, are so high up on Yuda. They loved what Yuda brought to their squad. They're actually really excited for him to be reunited with KD. Everyone loves Yuda. Yeah. And he's he's like, obviously, he's a fan favorite because he's well-liked. I don't know if people saw, um, but him and Mikhail quickly developed a handshake and, like, Nets fans couldn't get enough of it. Um, but he's one of those guys that can come in off the bench and in 10 to 15 minutes a night heat up to the point that he helps put a game away early in the fourth quarter. Um, if you read the piece today that I wrote over at gophnx.com, one of the things that stood out to me is he was number one in the NBA in three-point percentage in the fourth quarter among qualified players. 
Uh, number two is Damian Lee. So this is a guy that even though he got phased out of the rotation after the Kevin Durant trade, even though he didn't really play in the playoffs much, for most of the year, he was shooting about 50% from three while he was getting rotation minutes. He was stepping up in early fourth quarters and knocking down threes to help his team claw back into games, to help extend leads. Um, and he was really good from the corners. Like, he is elite from the corners. And as we all know, that's a huge area where the Suns struggled against the Nuggets last year. They shot something like 22% from the corners. So I don't know if defensively he's going to be able to hold up enough to Vogel's liking to be in the playoff rotation. That'll be his big question. But if he can... The three-point shooting that he brings addresses some very specific areas of needs, and he can help this Suns team in that way. I talked to several Nets people over the course of the last week, and they all told me uh, basically what what yes. Homie is saying in the Eddie. chat, that we might be shocked or surprised at least at, um, yeah, Eddie Mensa says, Yuta is underrated defensively, by the way. He'll surprise you guys. Not a liability at all. He can close. Um, I heard that several times from other Same. peeps um, that he was not as bad defensively as people are making him out to be. And the fact that he's going to be on the court with, some some viable shooters that are going to be able to free him up and get wide open shots. In addition to to his length, he's a little scrappy. Um, and they they gave him a lot more credit on the defensive end than than you would be led to believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for that. When I watch, it's hard to like unless you go back and actually watch a game and and sift through and get to the highlights or get to his points. It's hard to look at a highlight film and be like, oh, yeah, defensively, he's great. Well, they're always going to show the good stuff. Um, but I thought, you know, overall, uh, from the things that I have seen, I really like his addition. I I just feel like if we would have had him a year ago, that might have been such a difference maker because we just needed somebody to hit a shot wide open. Mm -hmm. And Yuta, I don't think, is going to have that problem at all, which is fantastic. He's already a, a, a KD fave, um, mm -hmm. which is – and listen, he's, got, he's already started to build – a little bit of a cult following across the league. Um, there's a couple guys around the league that are like that, that no matter mm -hmm. where they go, people are already excited about them. We got another one in Bowl Bowl. We <laughs> might have the most cult following team ever. I yeah. mean, With KD, Bowl Bowl, Yuta, like it's, it's going to be insane. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So, Gerald, one of the things that stood out to me within your article is you said, um, we're talking about his threes, right? So he mm. attempted 133 uh, total attempts last season. And 129 of those were catch and shoot looks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then beyond that, just total attempted buckets last season in general, 232 mm -hmm. or 35, depending on which uh, site you look at. We're going to go off of 232. So 232 attempted buckets, 133 of those were threes. And so I feel like when it comes to Yuta, one of the things that really stands out to me is that it doesn't seem like he... And I mean this in the best way possible. He's not going to try and go above and beyond to prove himself outside of the range of what the team is asking him to bring to the table. And I think that is so important. I think we have a lot of players on this team this year who know exactly what their biggest strengths are, what the team is going to ask of them, and they're going to put their head down and do that exactly. They've accepted their role. They're happy in their role. And I think that's an underrated thing to have in a lot of your guys who are coming off the bench. I just think it's going to make a huge difference. It's going to be great for the locker room. You're not, it doesn't seem like the egos are so large that it'll create an issue. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, he knows it, what he does best and he does it right. He does. And he doesn't stray too often from that. Like, like you said, 129 of his 133 threes were catch and shoot. They had zero dribbles attached, and all 133 of the threes that he attempted were, they came on touches of less than two seconds. So he's a guy that's making quick decisions. He's getting his shots up right away. Um, and he doesn't veer too far from that too often. Like, I think he only took four pull up threes and 14 pull up jumpers from inside the arc all season. Like, it's not a shot that he's good at, so it makes sense. Um, but he's also pretty, he shot really well around the basket. So he knows how to attack when people try to run him off the three-point line. Um, I don't think that'll be as much of an issue in Phoenix just because the spacing is going to be insane. He's going to get a lot of open looks. Um, most of his shots were wide open with the Nets. So now you add a third superstar into the equation instead of just KD and Kyrie like he had in Brooklyn. I think that's going to make his life even easier. 
Um, he can be a little awkward finishing around the rims at times, and if he's met with contact or resistance, he does throw up some kind of questionable shots. But other than that, like the percentages at the rim are good. The percentages beyond the three-point line are good. He hits them from areas and at times in the shot clock and at times in the quarter when you need him to. So, like, he's he's a great role player for this team, really good value on a veteran minimum contract. And as uh, Brian said in the chat, uh, the Utah puns can rival Bull Bull. You don't even know. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I can't wait for this, man. What did you, what, what is the name that was in your article? Big what? Shatanabe. Oh, they gosh. love yeah, that yeah. over in Brooklyn. Yeah. Ian Eagle on the Nets broadcast. Yeah. I like Utah the shooter. You that, the I, mean, that I, mean, one I, I can see the shirt already. Shooter, let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. What's the over <laughs> under of the amount of puns with oh, player names from this year? They're endless. It's infinite. Bull, like, Bull, and Yuda, it's over. The limit does not exist. Yes. I mean, honestly, though, is it mostly just the two of them at this point? It's undeniable. <laughs> or is there somebody else we can add in <laughs> She's that trying mix? To <laughs> Rick said, please stop giving Gerald more ammo. Yeah, you guys. I can stop feel giving like the power surging in my fingertips, all these puns that I'm about to unleash on my oh. tweet deck. And he said, Swatanabi. Swat oh, if he gets the blocks. Oh, yes. Yep. yep. Gosh, you guys. Let's this go. is going to be insane. Absolutely. <laughs> we will just have a shirt insane. with all the sayings of all the players. Just yep. It'd be, it's going to look time. like a band's tour dates. There's mm. going to be so many just down yes. the line. Yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. So we do have a couple super chats and one that I missed from earlier. Uh, we're going to throw back. Oh, where'd they go, Emma? She's Here we go. Away. Okay. So you were talking about the fights at mm -hmm. that MGM saw. Apparently, we have some people in the chat who want that to be the next PHNX competition. Um, but they want to get in on the action as well. So Frank, first of all, said Espo versus Saul fight. A couple AZ boys as well. Okay. And then Manita said, so. yeah, but well, you were raised here, I were know, you I'm, not? I'm joking. I'm joking. Manita said Manita versus Code in a four rounder. Oh, damn. So now we got... Got chat fights. We got the friends yeah, got getting fights. in on Let's the go. action. Listen, can I don't know what do the this? insurance is going to look like on this, <laughs> yeah. but can we do this on a dock or a pier? <laughs> I'd oh be down with god. that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Leo also that. sent us a super <laughs> chat. Thank you, Leo. Appreciate you. Said. Another one of Yuta's weaknesses is trying to block a dunk, LOL. We all remember Anthony Edwards and last year Donovan Mitchell destroying the hell out of him. Look, initially that was how most people knew Yuta Watanabe because of the Anthony Edwards dunk. But I think last year he finally put that behind him. I don't remember the Donovan Mitchell one personally, but I'm I'm okay with the guy trying. He's he's I mean, he's six foot eight, so I would rather him try if he's in the way, but yeah, that was that was an unfortunate moment for hey, him. At least he wasn't Brandon Knight. <laughs> it, it, it was it was close. Not far off. It was close. It was close. <laughs> it was in but the it, same stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing though. Mm -hmm. I still like as much as it as bad as it is on the highlights on social media and it circulates for a really <laughs> long time, mm -hmm. potentially follows you for your entire career. I get I respect the hell out of players who at least try. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there, there are certain business decisions where I understand you just got to move out of the way. Yes. Of course. But if you're down there, you may as well try. Because I feel mm -hmm. like it looks worse if you're in position and you're just like, I'm, I'm going to head out. Mm -hmm. Like I would, be, I would feel some type of way about that more than anything, I think. So The I problem is those moments get forgotten a lot more than. That's fair. They do. <laughs> Still, you got to give them credit for at yeah, least yes, trying. Yes, exactly. You got to give them credit for at least trying. Right. I, I Whether it pans out or not. I gotta refresh my memory. Oh no, you're not time. playing yeah, it. Yeah. I can, Are you, you know, looking it up? Live right reaction now? right now. Oh, Let's go. Like, that's trauma. I just it's just so Saul's watching the Anthony Edwards dunk <laughs> for our audio listeners. And oh, no, I'm so concerned for him. It's not pretty. Yeah, I mean it's all oh yeah. It's pretty vicious. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> Yeah. All to right. his credit, his NBA career could have ended at that moment. It could have. It could have. And he came back stronger than ever with the Nets, had a career year, yeah. and now he's on a title contender here in Phoenix. So I it wasn't. Mean, it wasn't as bad as the Brendan Knight dunk. No, but it wasn't pretty. But nothing. It, the Brandon Knight dunk will live forever because of the Bleacher Report 
coffin that they dropped on him that they photoshopped over him <laughs> like when he hit the ground they photoshopped a coffin on top of him and like I mean, flowers that said r.i.p like that's it was, so me that was like <laughs> that was that was the most vicious dunk i've ever seen in the history of basketball it, yeah. it just it was that's so mean though <laughs> oh my god bless his heart yeah that's tough all right well if you guys want to read more gerald has a fantastic article up right now over at gophnx.com I am pretty sure we only have two more of these left. So Mm -hmm. outside of those two players, there's a whole bunch of articles up there. If you are looking to read more Suns content, I know it's August and there's not (laughs) a lot of things going on right now. So if you're itching for some great Suns content in written form, Gerald has you covered again over at gophnext.com. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. I don't know about you guys, but my Monday is better now. Yeah, well, good for you. Not Lindsay. that the show is over. I actually enjoyed the progress of the show. I, knew, I feel much better. I knew See you, you tomorrow. guys were going to go that route. I'm saying as the show progressed, I'm starting to really get into it. Okay. My Monday turned around thanks to the two of you and uh, Emma. Well, that's nice. And everyone in the chat, too. That's really nice. You're welcome. Don't say I never said anything nice about you. <laughs> thanks for joining us, everybody. Don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at phnx underscore sons. You can also follow me at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Saul at Saul underscore Bookman. And of course, you can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. Who'd like to take us home? Oh, man. I don't even have anything for this, really. I'm sorry, buddy. Okay. You don't want to be here? You don't have to. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Phoenix Metro, Megas in control, and he ain't never gonna let go. PHNX, though, Lindsey Gerald Espo. Saw past the ball, we here to turn up the tempo. Got to understand me, y'all always wreck the family. Rally in the valley like Dan G.